Welcome to Daily Office Devotions, where every Monday through Friday, we explore that day's scripture readings as given in the Book of Common Prayer. I'm Reggie Kidd. Thanks for joining me. This is Monday of Christmas week. Merry Christmas. While everybody else is taking down the Christmas decorations and sending Santa on his merry way back to the North Pole, Christians who follow the Christian year are just beginning the party. We celebrate 12 days of Christmas, and through Advent, it's been all about anticipation. Now for a season of celebration. Characteristic of Christian joy, however, is a tinge of pain. Jesus' incarnation brought the second person of the Trinity all the way into the mess he had come to redeem. Murder in the name of God. Lovelessness among the so-called godly. Callous disregard for life's little ones. The Christmas year acknowledges this reality with what I think of as a Christmas triptych. We remember Stephen and his martyrdom on December 26th, the Apostle John and the commandment of love on December 27th, and the holy innocents and the need to protect the vulnerable on December 28th, the collect of St. Stephen. We give you thanks, O Lord of glory, for the example of the first martyr, Stephen, who looked up to heaven and prayed for his persecutors to your son, Jesus Christ, who stands at your right hand, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Few of us are asked to take up our cross as severely as Stephen. However, in many parts of the world, losing your life for your faith is not uncommon. As a professor, I was humbled by the risks some of my students took in coming to the United States for training in ministry. At least one student won a martyr's wreath upon his return to his homeland. But there are other kinds of deaths besides crucifixion or stoning. They vary from lost job opportunities to rejection by spouses or family members to, to subtle and not so subtle snubs by former associates or friends. We can use these experiences to be reminded by St. Stephen that the fellowship of the sufferings of Christ is part of the privilege that comes with the Incarnation. The Christian story is one of forgiveness. Forgiveness. Always forgiveness. Stephen's, Lord, do not hold this sin against them, Acts 7, 50b, is both a lovely echo of Jesus' own forgiving prayer from the cross and also a powerful call to Christ followers to resist the haters by not hating back. It's a call to translate loss, rejection, and snubs into thankful praise for the new friendships and for the newly opened doors that always seem to follow the doors that get slammed in your face. Most importantly, Stephen teaches us that above it all, always is Jesus. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God, Acts chapter 7, verses 55 and 56. By his death, Jesus destroyed death, and by his life, he destroys our fear of death. Every kind of death, the big ones and the little ones, as Lord of all, he is Lord even when, as was the case with Stephen, deluded people are running the show and have you in their power. You never know when, as was the case with Stephen. See Acts chapter 8, verse 1. There's a Saul, Paul in the wings observing. If uncomprehendingly in that moment, your equilibrium, your faith, and your undeniable love. I pray that as the collect invites us to pray, we may know the absolute supremacy of Christ over every hand of oppression that comes against us or voice of criticism that we hear. I pray that the power of forgiveness and grace has the upper hand in our lives and that it overflows to those around us. Be blessed this day.